scaffolding. As we saw in the activities about learning objectives, we describe learning by saying what students are able to do after completing a lesson or instructional unit. In other words, learning means being able to do new things. When we are still learning something, we can do more and do it better when we are helped by someone who is more capable and knowledgeable. This could be a teacher, a parent, or a more knowledgeable peer. The difference between what a learner can do by him or herself and what he or she can do with help is called the zone of proximal development. It is often shortened to ZPD. Vygotsky is the thinker who originally coined this term. While Vygotsky's work focused on children, Extensive research has supported this model of learning for adult learners as well. After accomplishing a task with the help of another, a learner is then able to do the task more independently the next time. In order to reduce this gap of capabilities and help students reach their full potential to master content and use their L2 independently, a CBI teacher needs to scaffold. In the world of construction, scaffolds are the temporary structures that provide physical support to workers and help them reach the work areas they themselves could not. In a CBI classroom, instructional scaffolding provides the same support to classroom teaching. It is used as needed to bridge the learning gaps when students are unable to complete a task without support. Scaffolding should be withdrawn slowly when it is no longer needed. Scaffolding is a powerful tool for learning as it helps students go beyond what they could do on their own. In CBI classrooms, the scaffolding that teachers do creates supportive conditions in which students can participate and extend their current skills and knowledge to reach higher levels of competence. Thus, scaffolding demands that teachers continuously revise the techniques and strategies in response to the emerging capabilities of their students. For instance, students' limited use of the target language and frequent comprehension errors can be the signals that teachers need to provide more scaffolding. Through the provision of timely and constructive support, scaffolding allows students to engage in meaningful learning and lower their anxiety levels. What does scaffolding in a CBI classroom look like? Scaffolding in a CBI classroom involves two major steps. The first step is the development of lesson plans to structure the lesson so that it transitions from what the students already know to acquiring new concepts. In the second step, the execution of the lesson plan takes place and every step involves the support of the teacher. The instruction begins with the teacher modeling the task and students observing it. Then it moves to guided practice, where students perform parts of the tasks independently and the teacher provides guidance. Gradually, as the students gain expertise, the complexity of the task is increased and the support is reduced. The process continues until the students perform the entire task with little or no support from the teacher. Now we'll describe some of the techniques that a CBI teacher can use to scaffold. Think Aloud. Think Aloud takes place in a controlled setting where students are directed by a series of questions to think about and answer 
while reading. It is a technique that helps students monitor their thinking while reading any text and reveals how much they have understood. To make their understanding and thought process visible, the following list of questions can be posed. What do I know about this topic? Do I understand what I just read? What do I think I will learn about this topic? Do I have a clear picture in my head about this information? How does it fit in with what I already know? What more can I do to understand this? What were the most important points in this reading? What new information did I learn? Pre-teaching vocabulary. As discussed in module one, vocabulary development directly impacts the academic achievement of students. Vocabulary words should be introduced in context while associating them with the things that the students already know and find interesting. Since vocabulary is a critical component of a CBI classroom, it should be taught outright. Teachers should also allot time for discussion of those words in pairs, small groups, or with the whole class. Instead of using dictionaries at early stages of a lesson, these should be used later, after the discussion, to compare the definitions that the students have already discovered and come up with. Think, pair, share. Think, pair, share is a cooperative discussion strategy that involves three steps. Think. The teacher provokes students' thinking by posing a question, prompt, or observation, and students take a few minutes to think about it. Pair. Students then pair up with their classmates and talk about the answer or thought that they came up with. While doing so, the students compare and identify the answers that they think are the most suitable, convincing, or unique. Share. After discussing the question, each pair shares their responses and thinking behind them with the whole group or class. Use visual aids. Visual aids like graphic organizers, infographics, charts, and pictures can serve as effective and interactive scaffolding tools. These tools help represent ideas and concepts visually, organize information, and show the relation among various other concepts. Visually representing ideas by synthesizing several hypotheses can help students use and deal with new and challenging information. Final words with several more ways to scaffold. Apart from these techniques, CBI teachers can also bring some changes to their regular teaching style by using simpler vocabulary and syntax, reducing the speed of the messages, introducing more pauses, giving generous amounts of waiting time for students to think, modulating their voice, and using more gestures and facial expressions. These are the references used for this presentation. And here are some suggested further readings.